Isaiah chapter 15 corresponds with the book of Ezra. The burden of Moab. Now Moab is one of the sons of Lot with his daughter. After Sodom and Gomorrah, both his daughters got him drunk in a cave, had relations with him and produced a child. Both these children of Lot are enemies of Israel. And it's kind of funny because the law says, you know, forbids a Moabite, but the law does not forbid a Moabite this. And David's grandmother, great grandmother, great great grandmother, is a Moabite this Ruth. The burden of Moab. And what we're going to read through these chapters is a short chapter. We're going to read about Moab, the judgment of Moab, the destruction. We're also going to see details of the tribulation period. Bible says, The story show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. When you just read, okay, blah, 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 okay, I got my I got my three or four chapters done for the year. Okay, I read the Bible through a year. Did you read through a year? Did you study the Bible throughout the year? Did you learn something? Because in the night, these will be cities, our of Moab is laid waste. Destruction, plain and simple. And brought to silence. No, there's no one there. There's no, you know, children playing. No women talking. Because in the night, Kerr of Moab is laid waste. And brought to silence. So two cities, waste and silent. Nothing going on. He is going up to Bithith and to Dibon. The high places, those are places where they went and worship other gods. Those high places is, is in the place of Moab. These high places that were in the heathen nations brought to with the heathen gods were brought into Israel, Judah, both of them. And these high places you find back in Genesis, they, they found a place and said, let us build a tower to reach into heaven, not reach to God, reach to heaven. And the higher we go, the closer we can get to a utopia type of God. This is why Mount Everest is one of them most got to conquer that mountain. Because that's reaching a high place. And then when I can get to Mount Everest, the highest place on this earth, I, I accomplish something. And it's funny because they're on Mount Everest... There are dead, frozen bodies. And they are used today for navigational aids. To weep. Where are they going to high places? They're going to before their gods. And they're weeping before their gods. We're in destruction. We're in trouble. We're in problems. Our nation's going to poop. Moab shall howl, ah, agony, over Nebo and over Mid-Deba. On all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. They're shaving themselves. Maybe medical, today medical chemotherapy will remove your hair. And he said, every beard cut off, that, that's done purposely. And men here, just in this region, all that, beards are important. I've had, I've had Christians, you know, a beard is unholy, a beard is a... There's two places in the Bible I read about shaving. David's military men, when he sent them... At the death of a man's father, they shaved half their beards. David said, go down to Jericho, a cursed city, and 
you know, wait for your beard to grow back. And then another place I read about that a man it was going before a ruler and he shaved his, he shaved his hair. That was Joseph being going before Pharaoh. And in the Egyptians, you shaved. Shaving was the thing. I mean, I can go far as say, hey, listen, you don't want to shave. That's Egyptian, but I won't. I just wanted to throw that in there. In their streets, they shall gird themselves with sackcloth. Agony, defeat, broken, sad, uncomfortable. On the tops of their houses, and their houses had porches on them. Because remember Peter, he's on top of the house, and, and he has that dream, with that sheet. And Jesus says, upon the housetops, preach the gospel. You would go up on the house. And in their streets, everyone shall howl again, weeping abundantly. It's a time of sorrow. It's a time of destruction. It's a time of agony. You don't mess with sin. You don't mess with God. And you don't mess with Israel. In their streets. And Heshbon shall cry. And Elah. Their voice shall be heard even to Jehaz. Therefore the armed soldiers, military of Moab, shall cry out. And his life, the soldier, shall be grievous unto him. In the tribulation period, there's a point of time that these animals show up with locust tails. And the Bible says they're going to seek death, but it ain't going to happen. All right, here's Moab. They're, they're being destroyed. And yet now when we look at the tribulation period, there is crying, there is howling, there's, there's tragedy, there's silence. Under the Antichrist, who won't worship him. And then when at the end of the seven year period, when Jesus Christ comes, there's, there's no artificial, no natural light. Men are throwing their gods to the, to the caves and to the moles and to the rats. I'm glad God's not allowing his, his bride to take part in that. And that when death will be sought in that period in the tribulation, when you can't die the series, I think it's three months or six months of pain. Well, your life is going to be grievous. And you're not going to be able to go run to the hospital, show you a mark, and get health care. God said there'll be no relief. And with all the vials, the trumpets, and, and the seals going on. Yeah, they're worshiping the mark, and they're worshiping, worshiping the, the, the beast and all that. But their lives are not joyful and happy. My heart shall cry out for Moab. There's someone weeping for, I mean, someone's, Moab's in trouble. His fugitives shall flee unto Zoar. That's where Lot went. Going back to where their father, where they were conceived. Talk about a nativity scene in a cave. A heifer of three years old. For by the, the mounting up from Litha with weeping shall they go it up. Again, there's that weeping. In the way of horny I am. They shall raise up a cry of destruction. This is going to happen to Moab. This is going to happen to the people in the tribulation period. And then ultimately, when they end up in hell, is a place of torment. 
Listen, we today we're at the barber's market and people were laughing and jesting and, and mocking, you know, going to hell, this and all that. And, you know, and you're watching, they're doing the boogie woogie with, with the music. Their lives are not happy. They're not enjoying full. I mean, I watch some of those people. They just sit there. Their whole life is there, sorry, just to sit there and try to sell something. And some of them go all around to the different farmers market that we have. We have a lot of farmers markets down here. And they're not happy. They, they may act it. Listen, today, you know, I'm thinking about there's a couple of things, you know, prayer life, I'm reaching out to God. And I still got the joy in my heart, and I've always got the joy, and I could be upset, but the joy will come back. And the joy is not in a music, though hymns will make me happy. Joy is definitely not in alcohol. Joy is definitely not in tobacco. Joy is not definitely going to a, a foreign woman who's not my wife. Joy is not into, you know, illegal drugs. In the most part, the devil's people without God, they're not happy at all. They may think they're happy. The devil's deceived them. Just listen to them. Monday morning. Oh, this job. Oh, my wife. Oh, my children. For the waters of Nimrim shall be desolate. And for three and a half years in the tribulation period, there's a drought. There is no rain. And we'll see blood in a moment. And there's a period that one third of the waters are going to turn to blood. There's a point that the water, that this, this meteorite or, or star that comes down, wormwood. And another third part of the waters are going to be made bitter and deaf. You say, well, what, what's the, well, you got the one third of good waters. And you got to have the mark on your forehead or your hand to receive those waters at a price. Lamentation speaks about Israel. They've been taken captive. Their city has been destroyed. They're saying, our water. Realize we're not free in America. I remember my grandpa's house in Waterford. I remember all the times they had a well, and wells were a problem. Certain times you, you couldn't flush a toilet. Sometimes you had to be water conservative. But he didn't have to pay for the water until the city came along and made him pay. And then send, send him and people get a bill every month for water. And it's not good, clean water. I don't drink the water in Daytona Beach. They tell me, I got a fish tank here. They tell me one of the worst things for, the, for a fish tank down here in Daytona Beach is the Daytona Beach water. If it's not good for my fish. Uh, people talk about, we're free in America. We're great in America. Do you get a water bill? Then you're not free. Rebecca, when she's going down to the well to draw water, she don't have any cash. She don't have any money. She goes down there, and, and the girls have their little talk, and they're and they talking there, and they scoop up their water. and they, they didn't pay for it. They had to walk for it, but... One of the things that your country is, has been desolate, your country has been overtaken, is when you start getting a water bill. Who gave that water? God gave that water. And the, and the man is telling you, oh, you got to pay for it. There are, there are places, there are states in the United States that it is completely illegal. And I've seen it. For you to harvest rainwater on your property. It's illegal. And I would hate to be those people with something harvesting rainwater and God's free water he gives us standing before God that gave the water. 
when Jesus meets that woman at the well, John chapter four, he, he says, you know, whoever drinks of this water, you know, you should, you're going to drink again. You're going to drink again. You're going to drink again. I am the living water. He didn't say pay for that water. That woman didn't pay for that water. Now, the men that dig the wells, you paid those men to dig the wells, but then the water, go get it. For the hay is withered away, the grass faileth. There is no green thing. All right, so in the tribulation period, there's, there's a third of the water's blood. third of the water's are, are uh, wormwood. A third of the trees are burnt up. There's going to be drought and famines in the reign of the Antichrist. America and the world today is, oh, just go to the store and get a bottle of water. It ain't going to be that easy in tribulation period. I can go to my school or I go to my business and, and turn the valve and get, get water out of the water fountain. It's not going to be that easy. I can just go to the store, get a box of uh, cereal. No, not when the grass is dead. And this also happened in 1 Kings 18. There's another time, I don't know if this is 1 Kings 18. There's one time of famine and drought. They were selling an ass's head for food. And dub dung. Dub dung, dub poop. Now, I think it's funny that, that Elijah comes along and says, hey, fill five barrels of water. <laughs> their, their lips were licking. What are you Therefore, the abundant, and it says no green thing too, plants. This is the picture was going to be in the tribulation. Because Genesis 1, God said he created the plants and trees. All right? You don't believe in God and his creation? All right, let Charlie Darwin and let evolution give you your plans. Come on, do it. Oh, okay. The sun and the moon and the stars, they're, they're a product of evolution, and God's going to turn them out. All right, let Charlie Darwin give you your sun. Get the product of, of the solar layers and the layers of the rock and the fog. Let them give you the sun. One point in the tribulation period, God says that the sun is going to scorch the people. If the, if the sun is going to scorch the people with fervent burns, it ain't going to be too well for the plants. It ain't going to be too well for the plants if you ain't got water for yourself, never mind water for your plants. And there are some people who would think that God loves his bride. Jesus Christ loves his bride so much that he's going to put her through that torment and torture. We're out of here. We've got entrusted the water of life. And these people that mock, you say, doesn't that get you angry? No, because it, it burns my heart. Because if the, if the rapture would happen in my time, most of those people are going to go through this period. They won't be laughing then. And then when the 144,000 comes along preaching the gospel to the Jews, and the good news is works in, in Jesus and works in the law. Their attitude in the book of Revelation tells me they're still will mock. Listen, I don't know how much it's going to be, but let's say the rapture happened right now. Boom, I, you know, you don't see me no more in the video. And, and, it, and the tribulation period comes. And the farmer's market is still here in Daytona. I don't know how much you're going to have, but. And 144,000 comes to Daytona Beach looking for Jews. I believe 144,000 for the Jews. Because the Gentiles have no idea what salvation is to help the Jews. It's Jacob's trouble. And 144,000 are going to come through here. And they're going to preach. And those people at the farmer's market, as they mocked and laugh and carried on with a good time, they're going to do the same thing for the 144,000. They're not going to change because the Bible said there's one point in the book of Revelation, the, the scorching heat. And yet they did not 
forsake their gods and did not re repent and get right with God. That's a shame. I'll tell you what gets me angry is when mocking, laughing, and, and ridicule, and, and downplaying is to a man serving God by supposedly a Christian. That's what angers me. When you try to get a Christian right and they get offended and they get, you know, that's what angers me. The lost people, God already told me that's how they would act. And my heart burns. The fact is, if the rapture would happen today, I don't know. Or even within my lifetime. These people that we're preaching to and these people we're trying to reach out to, they're going through this mess. And the Bible still holds true for them. Many, most, will go the broad way that leads to destruction. And the only way for a Gentile to get saved, as far as I see, as far as what I read, and I can be wrong, is their conduct to the Jew. And if the Antichrist is going to put such a price on the... Whatever you do for that Jew, we'll get you. We'll take care of you. Man, many people, are, they're not going to help the Jew. And all this, no grass, no food, no hay. You know how much food we get from grass to grass? We get we get oaks, grain, uh, rice, wheat, barley. You won't have your Budweiser. Amen to that. By the way, you won't have your beer in the, in, the, in the tribulation period. You know how much water it takes to make beer? You'll be blood wiser, not bud wiser. So you probably won't get your alcohol in hell, and you probably won't get your alcohol in the tribulation period. Unless the Antichrist has a secret stash. Therefore, the abundance they have gotten. What they carry. And that which they have laid up. So there is a gathering. Shall they carry away to the brooks of the wills? That's not much. Even if you think about it, let's say they get carts and wagons, it doesn't say, it doesn't say individual, or, that's still not much. That as the green things are dying, there are people gathering up and they're going away. Now this will happen around and a little bit after Isaiah's time, but the tribulation period, you're not going to, you're not going to do this. Because the Bible presently says, I forget what chapter you can go look. You're not doing nothing without that mark. You're not going to have a secret store. Let's see if I can find it. Like they say, it's in there. I know presently where it is. No man might buy or sell except he received the mark. Thirteen seventeen Revelation that no man might buy or sell. Save he have the mark or the name of the of the beast or the number of his name. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. In the, I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the tribulation. I'm going to grow me a home garden. No, you're not. Because your, gar your garden is going to weather up. Your water is gone. The sun's going to scorch. There's going to be no green thing. And whatever is left, you're going to be able to carry it somewhere. Listen, in Ethiopia, I've been told by a missionary in Ethiopia that they they walk two or three days to go to a, a preacher to a, a, a preaching. 
And on their way there, they would stop and eat grass. For the cry is going round about the borders of Moab. Nationwide. The howling thereof of Eagle. For hunger, for destruction, for agony. No relief. And the howling thereof of beer ilm. There's your beer. But a beer means well. America will do fine. America does not have very many, very many wells left. They've been all covered with, with blacktop and concrete. In 9-11, I remember one of the things that they they would have people go, they would think that the water the water systems would be tainted. They will be. For the waters of Dimon shall be full of blood, Revelation 16, 3. So imagine, you, you go into the grocery store and you go down aisle seven, the bottled water, and it it's all filled with blood. That's what happened in Exodus. And it said the people dug for, I think, seven days trying to find some water. Tribulation. For I will, God will bring more upon Dimon. Lions. Upon him, devil's a lion, that escapeth the Moab. So you get out of Moab, you're free. God says, okay, I'll send some lions after you. And lions upon the remnant of the land. Those who are still in the land, All right, I'll send some lions. Now think about this. Let's look at this as a tribulation period. Lions are going to go berserk because there's no food. I mean, animals are dying, the grass is dying. Now, here, here's, here's people that Jesus will say to them on the right side. Because you took care of me, you fed me, you clothed me, you medicated me, and you visited me when I was in prison. Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Yes, sir. When did we do that? Well, when you did it to my people, enter thou into the millennium. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> now they've seen wild animals. They've seen those beasts that, 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 that get you with the scorpion tails and torment. I think it's six months, six or seven months. They've seen an animals in the tribulation period are going to go berserk. Wild, rabies. Now they go into the millennium. Now, come on, let's look at the scriptures. We already spread Isaiah, didn't we? And this one over here. No grass, no green thing. All right. Uh, Isaiah 11, verse 7. The end of the verse. Lion shall eat straw like the ox. There's green things in the millennium. There's food in the millennium. That man that comes out of the, that comes out of the tribulation period and goes in the millennium for helping the Jews. Oh, it's a lion. He's not attacking us. Man, you remember in the tribulation period, you remember how those lions were going? What's that lion doing? Check this out. That lion's eating grass. And that little lamb is sleeping against it. What's going on here? Can you imagine the Jews and the Gentiles coming from the tribulation period, the great tribulation, and they're coming into the millennium under Jesus Christ? He said lions, and then he mentioned straw, grass. But we read already that curse is removed. 
Scripture was scripture. I don't like to read the Old Testament. Well, I feel sorry for you.